All right, guys, welcome back. So I took the truck out yesterday, you guys know that, and I put the new fuel pressure regulator in. So still have the same issue with the pressure jumping up with two pumps. Just so happened somebody posted that night on the Sloppy Private page about what they were doing with the same regulator to kind of get it to flow a little bit better. So the, the return orifice is kind of small inside the body of the regulator and basically you got to drill it out and there was a lot of other people kind of confirming that too so makes a lot of sense and that's kind of the process that i was going through and trying to eliminate all the restrictions on the return side but sounds like it might be an issue with the actual restriction inside the pump so i'm going to try that today we had kind of a lazy day just sitting around the house it was rainy outside and i spent like three hours editing the track video that just went up hung out with the kids played some games and now i'm going to do this because i don't have a whole lot of time and it shouldn't take that long so let's do it and i'll test fire the truck See if the pressure dropped. Okay, guys, just for reference, I want to show you in this video what the fuel pressure is at. You watch the the yellow there, we got fuel pressure. So when this reads, I'll start the truck and then we can look at the running pressure. about 67 68 psi and that's pretty much as low as i can get it on the regulator so i got the regulator out and now that i moved it up front it's really easy to service because it's all on just an lines and everything's really easy to work on so this is the orifice on the return side that's going to need to be drilled or that's what i'm going to drill so if you look at the size difference here versus the little hole that's in there you can make that a little bit bigger we'll see how big we need to make it but I'm going to be careful because there's like a little ball inside there and just want to make sure that we don't drill the hole big enough for that ball to come out. So let's take it apart and look at it. Alright, so here's essentially the inside of the regulator, have this little diaphragm in there, there's that little little ball. So fuel will come in into this little area, push this diaphragm up, and then you adjust the pressure but with this spring, and then this adjuster screw pushes down on the spring, and that's how you regulate your pressure. The more you push down on it, the higher your pressure will be. But this little orifice inside here is pretty small, so we're gonna drill that out and just make sure that it's slightly smaller than this ball right here so that can't, don't come through. All right, so the way I'm gonna do this here is I'm gonna use a caliper, turn it on, and then I'm gonna measure this ball. It looks like it wants to push through at about 235, 238. Looks like it's about the biggest size. So we'll find a drill bit that's a little bit smaller than the 23 eight and then uh we'll drill it out all right so now i'm gonna show you guys the biggest bit that i was able to find that fits inside this return orifice here so there is the tightest one it's pretty tight it's like an exact fit so let's measure this i'll show you guys the measurement comes up to about 0 0.112 0 0.113 112 this is in inches so this is the bit I'm going to go with, 0 0.228, 0 0.230, and here's the difference in size. So this is the, the factory return orifice size, and this is what I'm drilling it out to. It should come out pretty decent too, because if you look at the, the size of the return fitting, it's pretty, pretty close. Kind of incredible how small that thing is, to be honest. All right, and sorry to the guys who really like, like watching me drill holes, but I already drilled it off camera. So now I'm just gonna assemble it, put it back together, and then we'll check the pressure. Assembly's pretty straightforward. Put the diaphragm on, spring, little plate over the top, and then this guy will just go down here. So here's gonna be the honest first start. Here's the, the scan. I have the regulator backed off completely, and Turn the key forward, I'll start the scan, and then we'll we'll see what it does. Okay, 
Oh, fancy, doesn't want to connect. So now I'll disconnect, reconnect. Start the scan. I'm trying to do this all in one clip. So I came down to about 55. Um, not as low as I would like it, but it did bring it down about um, 13 PSI. So if you need that, I guess it helps. All right, so I got the regulator back out and you're probably wondering why, because it did work, but it, for me it didn't work as much as I wanted because I want to run a 43 PSI base because I'm running Snake Eater 210s. And what I found with these and I tested it going from a single pump to two pumps, they run a lot better drivability wise at a 43 PSI base. So what I'm gonna do is, and if you guys have found something different, drivability with two tens on stock computer at a 60 PSI base pressure, let me know. But what I wanna do now is take this distance here, this compression distance, you can see that there's when you fully assemble this, there's still that little distance that you need to compress before the cap is fully on there. So what I'm going to do is I want to cut that distance in half to reduce the amount of compression on this spring. So what I'm going to do is take the material out of the spring. I want to still keep it flat, so I'm probably going to use um, like a, <laughs> a grinder. I would like to say uh, a, a belt sander, but we'll do something similar and we'll machine this down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure that distance and then I'll take the same distance off of the spring. We'll try that. So approximate distance is 0.224 inches. So I'll take that down by approximately half. Maybe we'll go to 0.112. We'll try to get it there. So what we need to do is measure the distance now on the spring. And I need to take about that 0.112 off of the spring. 1.44. So I'm going to take it down to about uh, 1.325. Alright, so here you go. And I honestly just took a grinder with a flap disc on it and kind of trimmed down each end. And if I measure the same spot, it didn't completely take a full coil off, so you still have the ends of the spring ending where it normally did but it took a little bit off and now it's right at 1.316 a little bit more than I wanted but we'll see where that goes so let's give this a shot we'll start the scan So that is a 36 PSI base with two Walbro 450s running right now at the same time. Perfect. And then I'll be able to turn that up to 43 and I'll have some adjustable wiggle room, I guess you could call it. And the beauty about that is there will be enough compression on that spring to use the boost reference properly because the spring isn't going to be backed all the way off. All right, so I brought up two scans. I just wanted to show you guys this. So one is from yesterday. This one's from yesterday. This one's from today. So, uh, previous video I was talking about the drivability with the two tens and the high high base, right? So this is my issue. I don't know if this is the same for everybody, but you can see I'm at a 65 psi base pressure. This is with two pumps, and driving around like idling and stuff, you can see it's like showing lean. This was my rich misfire showing lean situation I talked about in the other video. Perfect to show it right here. So 65 psi. 17 air fuel ratio, but this is with the two pumps. So it's actually rich, misfiring, showing lean on the wideband. Now here's the scan from today. I haven't changed the tune at all. I didn't change anything. All I did was change the fuel pressure. And again, idling 42 PSI base. And now it shows 
a 13-4 air fuel ratio. So not changing the tune, not changing anything but the fuel pressure. It's actually an appropriate fuel pressure for the injectors and now it's not getting the, the rich misfire which shows lean on the wideband. So this should be a little bit better for my situation now that I have this set up pretty much right at 43.